Hey beautiful soul, this is Katie with the channel Weather Shaman. Welcome if you're new and a big hello to my returning subscribers. Uh, today I am joined by my dear friend, spiritual mentor and soul sister, Adrian. Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Adrian has been with me along my journey for the past decade, actually over the past 10 years. She is a beautiful light in my life, and we have come to you today to share our experience, strength, and hope in rising above trauma, going mm. from victim consciousness to a place of victory, learning how to empower ourselves and not let our circumstances and traumas that we've been through govern our lives, freeing ourselves from these conditions. And Adrian, I want to share a quote that you shared with me, if that's all right. Sure. Adrian shared with me recently something that really helped me to really think on some things. It says, I've decided that all the painful things we grow through are prerequisites to having the tools to help someone else. And then we will see how our experience can benefit others, no matter how far down the scale we have gone. So Adrian, can you share on that more? Well, uh, the thing that strikes me with that is prerequisite. You know, the, the, for myself, the trauma that I have endured in my lifetime um, was all of that is a prerequisite to bring me to who I am today. Yes, it changed the course of my life. It changed, it changed everything. And um, if it's, if I had a lot of it, you know, and, but, you know, it could have been, so it could have been something that turned me into something really bad and through addiction I did become something that was really bad I was a much lower human being but through recovery from that addiction and that's been a whole journey but I've learned and recovery from the trauma of those days if I just stop re-victimizing myself with it you know thank you for sharing that I'm glad you brought up uh, mentioned addiction you know do you feel like addiction of any kind is just a manifestation of one trying to cope or cover up the traumas and not knowing how to deal with them properly I'm of the, for me I believe that to be my experience that um, that was one of the just the natural coping skills that I developed to deal with I, I mean as soon as I could change how I felt um, and to blot out all that had been going on in my childhood, you know, I did as soon as I could. So, but now there's an awakening in me and a forgiveness in me, not a forget, but a forgiveness in me that allows me to use this hopefully to help someone else. Well, and I know you've certainly helped me. Uh, throughout the years, you know, being able to confide in you and the traumas that I've gone through and being able to share with you so that I can transmute those horrible things and rise above them. You know, one thing I've learned is we're as sick as our secrets. Yeah. And I'm so grateful I've been able to share <clears throat> all of these horrid experiences that I've been through with you to free myself. It's just so freeing to share with somebody. Yeah, and you know, that's true. Through working through these things over the years, this has been years of, you know, I've done therapy, I've done all my countless steps, count, all kinds of stuff to try and weed through the, you know, I would, I took the, tra the truth is for me, I took that trauma and re-traumatized myself with it over and over and over and over and I was the one who took those experiences. I didn't understand why God would allow that to happen. That was a big thing. Why would God allow those things to happen? Well, why? Why do you think that God does allow these horrible things to happen to people? In your opinion. In my, for me, if, you know, 
people say, oh, it's self-will. You know, and I, I do, I, I don't believe that God comes down at any time and deems someone, you get to have kids, you don't. You get to be raped, you don't. You know, you get to be beaten, you don't. You get to be starved, you don't. I don't believe that God is involved in that. But what God is involved in for me is the more I reach to God for freedom from this re-traumatizing of myself, the guilt, the shame, the taking responsibility for stuff that was not mine to take responsibility for. Before the age of reason, terrible things happened to me and that was not my responsibility. Now what I did to myself after the age of reason, that's mine. And, and that, in that, taking responsibility for it, and stopping that re-trauma, stopping being depressed about it, stopping feeling sorry about it, stopping feeling sorry for myself about it. I'm wasting my life away with those things. Stop. If you're listening right now and you're going through trauma or you've been through something traumatic and you're feeling guilt or shame, just know you're not alone and you are so loved. <laughs> You are not alone, and you are so loved. So loved. And Adrian, what would you say to somebody out there who's watching this, who has gone through something horribly traumatic, or who's in the midst of trauma, they're feeling stuck, paralyzed, frozen, afraid, not sure how to let go of the guilt and the shame, what words of wisdom or love would you give them for encouragement right now? Number one, you know... I needed to learn to trust trustworthy people and stop putting my trust in untrustworthy people. That was probably the first step I took towards liberation from this trauma. Because, and stop beating myself up thinking that I had some kind of power over that, you know? And if I did have power over, and because there was times when I volunteered for the abuse, even in those times, I have to forgive myself for that and realize that that was another time. It's what I did, it's not who I am. And because I choose recovery from all things, I choose recovery from this trauma too. And you can too. And um, stop beating yourself up. Just put the stick down. Put it down. Forgive yourself. And trust your gut. That's one thing that Adrian's always uh, taught me is I've got to trust my gut. If I get a bad feeling about somebody or there's that red flag, don't ignore it. <laughs> Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> I've done that so many times in my life. Like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to let that go. I ignore the red flag. Like, oh, they didn't mean to. And I give them the benefit of the doubt. And then I allow myself to continue being in that situation with that person because I choose to see their higher self, their highest potential. But I'm not grounded in reality as to what's really happening in my reality. It's almost like I dissociate and I'm in a fantasy world. And so I've had to learn to differentiate the truth and the false, fantasy from reality. That's right. And, you know, I want to be, I want to love the potential I see in you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I, I know what you can be. And I'm, I, want, I want to love that potential instead of what you're showing me, who you are. You're telling me who you are. You know, and I want you to be more, you see, and that's just me not being, it's me manipulating. Truthfully, it's me manipulating, not being honest with the way the person is showing themselves to be. And I want to try to manipulate them to be what I know they can be. <laughs> like I have some power. <laughs> But the power I do have is love. And, you know, but from afar, you know, 
and I'm no longer willing to trust untrustworthy people. We have a dear friend named Mark. Mark, I love you, brother. We love you, Mark. <laughs> he says, don't ignore the red flags. If you see a red flag, one flies up. Say, oh, there's a red flag. And do not ignore the red flag. Does he really say that? He does. He <laughs> told me that. I'm not lying. <laughs> That's such a true story. Hey, Mark. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't ignore the red flags. Don't ignore the red flags. That is huge. Yeah, I'm grateful for, for that. I'm great. I used to be anyway. I'm, I'm trying to learn it. I mean, it's not. It's a work in progress, y'all. Yeah, and trauma can take place in all different forms. Emotional trauma, sexual trauma, oh. physical trauma. You know, whatever uh, experience that you've had in your life that's brought about fear, shame, guilt, remorse, just know it's not your fault and you are so loved and you have a choice you have a choice you can choose to rise above this yes and become victorious and free yourself like a phoenix <laughs> rising from the ashes that's right yes Burnt up to a crisp by life rise from the ashes and become a beautiful phoenix yes it's in sharing our pain and these horrific experiences with people we trust that we can free ourselves of this baggage and maybe help somebody else who's been through the same thing or something similar. Which, I, if I'm not mistaken, is the point. Yep. That's what you were saying. All the painful things we grow, we grow through. Ooh, I like that. So all the painful things we go through, we actually grow through. And Jamie Crisco, shout out Jamie. Love you, girl. Hey, Jamie. Jamie has always taught me this, that we don't, go through things we grow through That's things right. well if if when i wrote something <laughs> here if and only if i'm willing to if i'm willing to keep let's see what does it say if and only if i'm willing to stop re-injuring myself Ooh, that's a big one with this trauma i have to Forgive myself. Most of all, it's me. I have to forgive. No one hurt me more than me. Oh, Francis Quintus, I love you. And um, love you, Danny. And you said <laughs> to me, you said, there's many ways. Love you, Francis. Many ways into the forest, but only one way out. I love that. And I love that, too. And it is so true. And there's so many forests. There's so many trees in the forest, whether it be sexual, like you said, sexual trauma, physical trauma, uh, whatever kind of, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter what it is. So Frances said there's so many trees in the forest? She said there are so many ways, ways. into the forest. Ways. Only one way out. Frances, that's deep. I love that. Thank you. We love you. Yeah, yeah. And We do. One thing that Danny has shared with me, shout out Danny, we love you. Love you, Danny. Uh, Danny has said, we, all we have to do is believe. Believe that we're worthy of being healed. Believe that we're worthy of love. Believe there's a power greater than us that can restore us to sanity and help us. Yeah, amen to that. I mean, you know, it's just the truth. There is, I don't care what you call it. I had a friend one time used a red fingernail polish. <laughs> Put it on her dresser, that was her, I, I mean, y'all call it whatever you want to call it, but I mean, that was her symbol for her higher power, and which, you know what, she stayed sober, and I don't know, you know, whatever works, it doesn't matter to me, as long as it works, right? Anything that's greater than ourselves, or outside of ourselves, that we can turn to for hope, for, for you told me, oh gosh, when I was a hot mess, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I had just gotten out of rehab back in um, 2013, and um, I asked you if you would help me with the uh, 12 steps in a 12-step recovery program, and you guided me through these steps and agreed to be my sponsor, which I'm so grateful for. Oh, me too, Kay. Uh, you said I had to get a higher power, and I said, what's that? <laughs> you got to have the God of your understanding. Well, what's that? I, at that point in my life, I was so scared and broken of anything. The whole God word freaked me out, um, caused me fear. And she said, well, what is it that brings you peace? And I said, well, nature brings me peace. She goes, okay, let nature be your God for now. Yeah. I said, okay, cool. Yeah. 
right. and nature is God, great outdoors, G-O-D. So I did that for a long time before I started to realize the God of my understanding. And you know, there it is. And as I have sought, you know, I read something that says it's never in the easy times that we find God. And you know, um, is you know, and I happen to believe that completely. And in the rough, rough, rough times, you know, that's the times when even, even the last little bit that I've been through where I denounced having, I'm not speaking to you, God. I'm so mad at you. And um, someone reminded me, you know, Adrian, even when you're screaming at God, you're speaking at, you're speaking to it. Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that kind of shut me up. But anyway, you know. Who said that one? Sandy. Okay, awesome. Coming through all of that and getting to where I am today has just opened my mind to the fact that I really injured myself. And nobody did it to me. No one did it to me. I did it to me. and Because um, you didn't feel worthy, maybe? Of Do you think it had to do with not feeling worthy? You know, at one point in my life, it was probably because of that. But I think this particular instance was had to do with just not wanting to feel what was going on in my life. I didn't know how to deal with what was going on in my life at the time. It was grief work stuff that I wasn't just wasn't willing to look at. Diana, I love you. I know you're in heaven having a great time. I see you all the time in a hot form. So. We love you, Diana. She is an amazing, beautiful soul who's in the spirit world, but we know she's amongst us. Yeah. And so, you know, um, just learning to live with that, deal with that, grow through that. So how can we all choose freedom over all this? You know, I believe for me, one day at a time when I when I awaken, one of the things that I'm trying to make a practice is just thanking my higher power for the upcoming day and to please guide me through that day and be the best that I can be and be, be aware of what I need to be aware of to help someone else, be of service, you know. And that has changed. My service over the years has changed. You know, so, I mean, I used to be real involved in another aspect of my life. And today it's transitioning into something different. And I don't know what that is, what that outcome will be. But I know it will be beautiful. That's awesome. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, service to others is huge. You know, Adrienne's helped uh, women in halfway houses get their lives back. She's sponsored many people in 12-step recovery programs. She's shared her light and love with the world. Uh, she's done really cool things at flea markets and having her own business uh, and helping to empower people. Uh, she's done so much for so many people and you inspire me so much. Oh, thank you, Katie, you're very kind. Well, it's the truth. And y'all straighten your crowns. <laughs> we got crystal crowns. Men and women, y'all straighten your crowns. Just be yourself and don't let anybody dim your light and uh, know that everybody's going through something. Yes. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay not to know. It's okay not to be perfect. Nobody on this planet has their crap together. Nobody. Even if they say they do, they're full of crap. <laughs> Nobody has it all figured out. We are all learning. We are all equals. We are all each other's teachers, mentors, and guides, helping each other um, on this human journey. We're all multidimensional spiritual beings having a physical human experience. And it is so important that we learn to practice some humility, deflate the ego enough to where we're willing to share with each other, ask for help. That's been the hardest thing for me on my journey is learning how to ask for help. I agree. That is tough. I want to do it all myself like a three-year-old. I don't know where I get that crap from, but I do it too. I couldn't, I couldn't do it by myself. I ended up having to go to therapy, uh, in-person therapy, one-on-one, -on -one, group therapy, rehab. This was, <laughs> uh, I, And then I went to, uh, Adrian helped me through the 12 steps and 12-step recovery as my sponsor. I also have gone to Reiki Master Healers. Uh, shamans, uh, life coaches, I've done it all. 
that's what's helped me to heal along my journey is just having the humility to ask for help and admit that I don't have it all figured out and I don't know what I'm doing and just learning as I go. And that's all any of us do. We just learn as we go. The main thing is I, I'm just, I am done beating myself up. I am just <laughs> Same done. here, same here, yes. <laughs> I love that. Uh, how did you, tell me how, when was the first time you learned to ask for help? Was it hard for you to ask oh for help? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my sponsor, Marva, my very first ever sponsor in the whole wide world, her name was Marva, and I just, thank you, Marva. Uh, yeah, she was, uh, I had to ask her for help. I had to ask her, and it was hard, and I was scared of her, but <laughs> she was the sweetest thing on earth. Turns out she was just like the rest of us, she had her stuff. Everybody's got their stuff. The point is we have to be willing to look at our stuff, you know? Don't, I have to stop with this pretending I don't have stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got stuff and I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna grow beyond it. And you know, that's, I think that's the, I'm having a ball doing it too. Time to face reality head on. You know, there's an acronym FEAR. It stands for either F everything and run or face everything and recover. That's it. And I know for me, the more that I've run from my traumas, the worse everything has gotten and I bring everything with me. But the moment I learn to begin to face it, it's scary, it's uncomfortable, it's horrifying. But if I can persevere and get on the other side of it, I feel so much more free and happy. Well, and that is the absolute truth. I didn't think I was going to make it through the last couple of years, and that's a whole other thing. But, you know, now that I'm on the other side of that, you know, I mean, it was hard. Hardest thing I've ever in my life been through. Tell them a little bit about the grief. Um, you know, um, if you're you know comfortable. My, mom, my mom got cancer like five years ago, um, got rang the bell. Then turned around three days later, got more cancer. I mean, long drawn out thing. Then my sister, my baby sister, whom I adore, Meredith, I love you with all my heart. She had cancer scares. That scared the hell out of me. Diana got cancer and died. Um, my sister's husband had a heart attack and died. My sister has Alzheimer's. I brought her home with me after a whole bunch of, oh my, it's just been a, it's been a, a heck of a couple of years and, you know, wow, it's, it's been the biggest learning experience thus far in recovery and, and I'm, I am very grateful to be in recovery and I'm grateful to be on the other side of it, but there was a little while where I didn't think I was going to make it. I mean, I just didn't think I was going to make it. But God put angels in my life and, you know, they, Katie, you're one of those people that I say you helped save my life. You know, Aww. Libby, love you. Libby helped save my life. I mean, these are people that I've worked with all my time in this program, but I, I lost my mind. And, you know, but I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm so glad that you are coming back because we need you. Oh, well, I need y'all. And I think what you were sharing is grief. Anytime somebody dies unexpectedly or somebody gets a terminal illness diagnosis that we love and care about, that can be very traumatic because it causes that fear of abandonment and separation anxiety to come up and that can be traumatic like a sudden loss or you know so it's so important that we have a support network of people that we love uh in our lives to know that we're not alone find your soul tribe you know find like-minded people that you resonate with put yourself out there it really helps we're stronger in numbers we're not meant to live this life alone we are not we are meant to help one another so beautiful soul, just know that you are so loved, you are so appreciated. And once again, if you're going through something right now, just know that in time, this too shall pass. You will persevere and come out on the other side stronger than this. And just uh, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up and know it's okay to ask for help. 
it's okay to ask for help. Message Katie. If you need if you need to talk, message Katie. Yes, if you need to talk, message me. I do life coaching with people all over the world. I can connect with you on Zoom, online. Okay, I'd be more than happy to work with you and help you to move beyond any blockages in your life and help you to dive into your real life purpose while you're really here and to help you to work on some self-love, loving and accepting yourself. Which was one of the points that we wanted to make, I think, too, was that all of this, all of that stuff, whatever it is you've been carrying, your, you know, that is, that is brought you today to be what you're intended to be. That's why it happened. And you wouldn't still be here if there wasn't an intention for you to be here. And your experience, use it to help someone else because we're everywhere. And men and women alike, we hurt each other all the time. So let's try to raise each other up and just be honest, it's okay. We were hurt. It's okay. It's okay. I love that. That's beautiful. I can't think of anything else to add. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you so much for being on here with me today. I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you, beautiful soul. If nobody's told you they love you today, we love you. And you matter. And please let us know in the comment section below this video if you would like more videos like this in the future. Uh, we'd be more than happy to create more. If you're interested, let us know. What do you want to hear about? What are some topics that you're interested in? Okay, let us know in the comment section below. And if you want to share anything, feel free to share. And if you're a fellow YouTuber, let me know. And I'd be more than happy to subscribe and support you as well. We're here to support each other. We're sending you an abundance of peace, love, love and light from us to you. Namaste and much love.